What's good, people? So about a month ago, I dropped this Tamashii Nation survey video. Basically, it was detailing this survey, which, of course, was asking us what figures we would like to see for a myriad of different lines. Now, primarily, my focus is Dragon Ball, so that's what I focused on in the video. However, what inspired this video was a series of comments that I got. It was basically the sentiment was like, do we really need our 100th? Goku or a 50th Vegeta or our 10th Broly figure and that's just an example and just to be clear I'm not calling anybody out but I found it interesting because you know a lot of people even though we do have many variations of, this, of these characters a lot of people still want more and also that's why you see the picture on the screen because this is going to be relevant in a little bit but basically do we really need another variation to these characters? And I would say, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's the reason why I put these pictures on the screen. And I have more pictures to go through as well. But first we starting off with Vegeta, because Goku is definitely understandable. We have a million Gokus, you're gonna see when we go through the pictures. Look, Vegeta, we have the Scout of Vegeta. We have the original release of what was supposed to be Super Vegeta, but as we know, that mold was way too small. It worked much better as a regular Super Saiyan mold. We have the Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta from the Broly movie. We have the Dragon Ball Super Hero Vegeta. We have Majin Vegeta, the first release. We have Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. We have the most recent release, Awakened Saiyan Blood Vegeta. Super Saiyan Blood, rather. And we have the SDCC repaint of the Majin Vegeta. Now, out of all these releases, even though it's a lot of Vegetas that have been released, and in the past I've kind of been like, oh, they kind of skip out on the Vegetas, but... Out of all these releases, only a couple of the, maybe even only one of these is a great release. Out of all these Vegeta, think about that. <laughs> and it's arguable whether that figure is a great release, but in my opinion, it's a great release. And that's the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, right? That's the only great release. The rest are either good or just not very good at all. I'm looking at you, Superhero Vegeta. But. I don't mind getting, I, I want to address both sides, right? Because on one hand, it's like, damn, I've got, we have this character a million times over already. But on the other hand, it's like, yo, I want some new characters. Or, or rather, I want a definitive version of a certain character, right? And I think Vegeta is that one of those characters for me. I want a definitive version of each era of Vegeta, right? I want a definitive Saiyan Saga Vegeta. I want a definitive Super Saiyan Vegeta. And so on. Y'all get the point. And I don't really feel like we've gotten that. We got a, what I would consider to be a definitive Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. And these, like, two tweaks, I would say. Make him taller and fix that hip design. Not that it doesn't work functionally, but it just doesn't look good. Um, with that being said, let's look at more stuff. Now if we're looking at another set of Vegeta pictures, right? And as you can see, this is all 1.0 tech. If you're new to the SH Figure Arts line, it's all 1.0 tech. These are the first molds that they ever had. And as you can see, we've come a long way, right? And one thing, the reason why I put these on the screen is use these as a backdrop, for example. If they decided to give us another first appearance Vegeta figure, right? With an updated mold, I would not be mad at that because how long ago was this I think this was a San Diego Comic-Con release for who knows when, but as you can see, it had to be the very, very close to the beginning of the line because it's still on a 1.0 mold. Same if they did an updated version of the revival of F, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. When was the last? That was released eons ago. So I wouldn't be mad at updated molds for these because one, not a lot of people have them, and two, once again, the molds are old, you know? Now the paint might have been, I think the paint apps were better back then, but that can only carry you so far, because even in these pictures, it shows how old <laughs> the molds <laughs> have gotten, right? But that's my main point I wanted to say about the side for getting the same character over. Because, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's characters that, like, so many new characters, what I'm trying to say is this. So many new collectors have come into the line since then that it might as well be a new release. 
Now, if you're a veteran collector, you've been sticking with figure arts since the very beginning, then of course you might be more annoyed, especially if you're not a, for example, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, but you're not the biggest fan of Saiyan, oh man, I can see how you could be annoyed at the releases, but what are you gonna do? These are flagship characters of the series, it's Vegeta, you know? He's a, right now, he's a dual antagonist, or dual du antagonist. Dual antagonist. Yep. I'll put the word on the screen, y'all know what I'm, so y'all know what I'm trying to say. But, he's a dual antagonist, I mean, antagonist. He's a dual protagonist with Goku, right? So, it's gonna be, he's gonna get a lot of figures of him. I'm surprised we haven't gotten more of him, honestly. Because even with all these Vegeta releases, the, the time spans between them, and then, I think it doesn't help some of them were mediocre to bad. And then, like I said, the only great one altogether is Super Saiyan 4. Now, if we take into context the time period in which it was released, some of these figures could probably be counted as great figures for, you know, their time period. But with that being said, let's move on to a character that is a bit more harder to argue for this so thing. now we have somebody like goku right <laughs> in this case i can understand would be like do we really need another goku figure and once again i think he kind of falls into the same problem that vegeta does and not a lot of his figures are what i would consider to be a what hey that's my definitive goku i don't need to buy another goku you know now to give context to that I don't think that it's really, it's going to be a while before we get that, I think, still. It's going to be a little bit longer, still, before we get that. But, there are examples of that in this action figure line. Like, for example, Super Boo. I don't think I'll ever have to buy another Super Boo figure again. Maybe some very slight tweaks, but I don't think I'll ever have to buy another Super Boo figure again. Same with thing with the Final Form Cooler. Never gonna have to buy another one. That is cooler. That is the definitive cooler figure. So that's the you don't need to buy another one. They don't need to make another one unless they're gonna do a repaint or just re-release it for the sake that maybe some people missed out on it and the prices have gotten exorbitant and they're willing to be that generous with it, you know? But you know, we have the Warrior Awakening Goku, which was the very like the very beginning of the 2.0 quote unquote body mold era. I say quote unquote because that's a whole video in its own. Oh, I might have to update that video. Let me know if y'all want me to. Or I might do it on my own anyway, but we'll see. Still like to hear your opinion on that. We got the full power Super Saiyan Goku. Got Ultra Instinct Sign or Omen, whichever you prefer. We got Mastered Ultra Instinct or just Ultra Instinct. Because I guess you could... I'm not even getting into that discussion. But Silver Hair Ultra Instinct. Saiyan Raised on Earth Goku. Dragon Ball Superhero Goku. See? Almost... <laughs> It's almost, it's pretty much the exact same figure, different paint scheme, but different uh, kanji on the, the gi. We got Super Saiyan 2 Goku, and then of course, we have a repaint of the Warrior Awakening Goku and the World Tour, and the World Tour exclusive Goku. And, I could see, especially during the 2.0 era of figures, why somebody like, yo, this is, this figure is pretty much, these are pretty much all the same exact figure, with the exception of some, all right, it's some major retooling here and there, but a lot of these figures are pretty much the same. Like, Super Saiyan 2 Goku, Full Power Super Saiyan Goku, and Saiyan Raised on North Goku, and Super Hero Goku, those are pretty much all the same figure, different, with different heights. And of course, different paint schemes, or what have you, or different molded plastic. And I guess a minor retooling. But besides that, they are all pretty much the same. So, with Goku, I'm, what I'm trying to say with Goku, I understand completely. Because, once again, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> and once again, we have, look how many God Gokus we got. And to be fair, to be fair, each of them were exclusive. So, they're very hard to come by. The first, I got the release of the first one. Um, did I? I know I never got the second one. I'll probably get this third one. So the first one, as you can see, is the brightest colored one. Below the brightest colored one is the SDCC exclusive, and next to the the over the Super Saiyan Blue one is 
the one that's going to be released in sometime next year. I'll probably put the date up on the screen. But even, I want to say, even out of all of these figures, it's only a couple of great Goku figures, even out of all of these, right? And I would say Super Saiyan, that would probably be Super Saiyan 4 Goku. And even though it hasn't come out yet, the Super Saiyan Goku, the legendary Super Saiyan. Which is all the way in the corner. The, the buff freezer saga Goku, basically. And I could see... I'm going to use him as an example. I could see why somebody would be annoyed. Like, another Goku? Even though he looks great. Another Goku. And because if you go back, he's pretty much the same. He is the same Goku as the torn shirt Goku. The main difference is, it's a him later on in the battle where his shirt completely got ripped off. And we see in all his bulging muscle. It's literally the same, meant to be the same Goku. But, Tamashi's double dipping <laughs> makes it so you can never really be too sure why or when, if, we'll get another variation to a character we already have a million times already. And to be fair, to be fair, I want to say this. These characters change their outfits in the show and even to be, <laughs> even with that, that's not a good excuse because as you can see, Goku's outfit pretty much is the same, with the exception of maybe changing from the belt to being just the wraparound belt to the tied belt, or, you know, the symbol on his gi changing a bit. It's pretty much the same outfit, except for, like, GT, right? But so many different shades of orange, or what have you. Kaioken, blue Goku, that's a completely different color scheme. But also, on top of that, these characters have a million different forms, right? And if they can give you the same... Uh, figure a bunch of times same form and what have you they will especially don't let them be able to update the mold and we'll move on to this right here you can see all the 1.0 Goku stuff I'm not going through all of that and oh yeah Kaioken regular Kaioken Goku another <laughs> reuse of that 2.0 mold same thing with Super Saiyan 3 Goku well actually I think the arms of Super Saiyan 3 Goku from the 2.0 mold was a bit bigger but and then the 1.0 revival of F Super Saiyan Blue Goku. And of course he has Kid, Kid GT Goku. That's that's a little different. Either way, he's the main character of the series. What what else is to be expected from that, right? He's the main character. He's all of course he's gonna have a million figures of him. He's the he's the he's the selling point of the franchise, or one of the selling points at the very least. So that's I don't know. But I, I remember when I was reading the comment, I heard Broly thrown in there. I was like, Broly? If anything, we only have a couple figures of Broly. And two of them, one of them is just a straight up repaint. And the other two are just, of course, it's Broly's box office. Of course, if, we can, if they could sell more and more Broly figures. Oh, yeah. And we got the superhero Broly. I almost forgot. But he's, he's box office. Of course, he's going to get a million if they can. If they could do it, we would get a million Broly figures. But he's not a character that's in the show regularly. But when he shows up, he has a you know a significant impact. But like for example, if you voted for Z Broly, that's a little different because for well, all intent and purposes, that's an entirely different character than Super Broly. You know, different design, different demeanor, and he's Broly. <laughs> what can I say? Like I said, box office. Now. I can understand, like, for example, for all intent and purposes, this seems to be a battle between the completionists and the, well, I like this character, so I want him type of collector, right? Because the completionists would be like, yo, give me the Oolong, give me the, the Chi Chi figure, give me the King Kai figure, and to be fair, I would like the King Kai figure too, that, I think that would be pretty cool, but give me the Kui figure. Give me these characters that I would say not a lot of people really care about all that much. Maybe King Kai a little bit, but for the most part, people, like, I don't think are really going to care about the Chi Chi figure like that. And I think it shows, personally, and this is this could be like a small, smaller contingency of collectors, but a lot of people have social media now. But if you go on Instagram, you don't see a whole lot of pictures of... For example, Bulma, unless you're specifically searching under the hashtag Bulma SH Figure Arts or something like that. You mostly see the characters that are action-packed, that fight in each other. That's what you see. 
So those minor characters, like those Dragon Ball s characters, like Oolong and whatnot, and that's just an example, of course, extreme example. You're not gonna really see those guys, right? Because they're not really, they're not who who's really screaming to the heavens for the Oolong figure. I'm sure somebody is, but that's not the hype stuff. And the Dragon Ball fan base, in a nutshell, is a fan base of hype. So, like, I would, I'm sure, I say that to say, I'm sure a lot of people would take a newer variation of Vegeta over the Oolong, you know? Or the Mr. Popo. Maybe, no, well, for, maybe for the meme of it, people would get Mr. Popo. But, other than that, not really, you feel me? Um... But yeah, now one thing I will say that the uh, per the people that argue, yo, let's get the characters that we don't have, a good point that they have, I think, is if we swipe back, if we look at that Ultra Instinct Goku, it is the same Ultra Instinct Goku re-release, right? I think it's a good re-release, but I think it's a character that steps into kind of annoying or dangerous territory. What I mean by that is this. That Ultra Instinct Goku is specifically meant to be the Toyo Taro version. I don't even think they selected the best version of his Ultra Instinct artwork, but that's a whole nother discussion. If they do that constantly, then it's going to get irritating because now you can do how many different art styles, different art styles up for one character, especially like a Goku. How many different variations of Ultra Instinct or how many different people have drawn Ultra Instinct? Is it the Yuya Haka? <laughs> I was about to mess butcher his name. The Yuya Takahashi Ultra Instinct? Is it the Toriyama original look for Ultra Instinct? Is it the Toyotaro volume, whatever cover version of Ultra Instinct? You get what I'm saying? So once we start doing it, and then how many different animators do people love? I already named one with uh, Yuya Takahashi, but. How many different animators are there? So in that regard, I could be like, I could see why people are like, let's get these new characters because it seems like this Ultra Instinct Goku is gonna be the beginning of <laughs> something very annoying in terms of, you know, just getting a character based off of a specific art style, which I personally like, but I understand as a whole collecting community, it's, it, it can be super annoying. No pun intended. But I would say that most of the time when people, people say let's get these characters that we don't have to fill out the collection are they characters that people really care about and i will also argue that you know we have been getting these characters that fill out the connect uh collection are we getting there on the way at the very least like we've gotten turles we've gotten the gammas if you care about the gammas but it's all a, it's all a matter of once again like, you care about these characters that are meant to be different than your standard goku or vegeta or whatever characters that you think they're producing too much of. Like I said, Gammas, Turles, second form Frieza, who else? Third form Frieza, and then that's another thing. These characters, just off the nature of the show, they have so many different forms, so you're gonna get a bunch of versions of the same character, but I guess that's a little different because at the very least, some of these transformations require brand new sculpts, so it's basically like you're getting a different character in a way. But with well, all that being said, I think I covered pretty much everything. And then also, I think it's a level of impatience because, as I always say, I feel like I say this a million times, but a lot of people want their Boo Saga content. And they have a lot of cool stuff. Like that kid Boo that went up from Taunton Art Toys for pre order. Man, listen. I was so happy that Taunton dropped that so we could stop hearing about the where's Kid Boo? Where's Kid Boo? You have your Kid Boo. That's if you even bother to want to get a third party figure now if you don't well you're still going to be waiting a while a little while but with all that being said between just to summarize between all the new collectors that are here now that are like yo i never got a chance to get this and like figures that just straight up need updates or just haven't been released in a long time which goes back to the new collectors thing I think each side has a fair point. I think the strongest point for the side of let's get these new characters is that 
I don't want Tamashi to fall into the trap of double and quadruple dipping into the same exact character. Because they're already showing hints of it with this Ultra Instinct Goku. And funny enough, I didn't even intentionally do this, but they're showing it with the Ultra Instinct Goku and they're showing it with the Go Goku, the legendary Super Saiyan Goku. Where, yeah, the, it's a look that people might prefer, but it's literally the same character. Maybe different art style or in the one case, a more updated mold, which I always welcome an updated mold. I'm a sucker for new sculpts. But with all that being said, this has been Bombastic Plastics. Stay fantastic.